Alice here. Today we're going to be making some gratitude jars. It's challenging during the pandemic to be staying positive while we're all staying home and waiting for things to get better. One way is to be creative. Another way is to focus on gratitude. So today we're going to combine the two and make a gratitude jar. The idea behind this is to focus on what you're grateful for. And we're going to be decorating the jar with that in mind. And when you've completed the jar, you can use a piece of paper and a pen and write down something every day that you're grateful for and put it inside your jar. Then when you're feeling a little more challenged to stay positive, you can open your jar and remind yourself of all the things you're grateful for. For this project, you're going to need a jar and any jar will do. It can be one you purchase. It can be um, an old canning jar like some of the ones that I've already done. You're going to need some white glue or Mod Podge. We have some matte Mod Podge today. You need a brush to do it with. We have some scissors to cut out some things. We have a variety of different kinds of papers to cover the jar with. We have some glitzy, shiny things to finish our jar off with. And I have some of my handmade paper. Um, I have some pictures I've ripped out. We have some words here we can put on to there. And I've got a stack of magazines if there's anything else that I want to look for um, a different picture. I don't have a lot of magazines, so I asked my daughter for some. You'll see my magazines are gardening magazines and her magazines are travel magazines. So that just points out how different everyone's jar is going to be because it's going to be on, focused on what you're grateful for and what makes you happy. Okay, let's get started. You're going to, I'm going to take my lid off first so I have a little better grip with my hand to be able to hold my jar sideways. What you want to do is put on a base coat of different kinds of colored paper, um, scraps of paper, and then on top of that, we will put pictures and words. So we want to put some Mod Podge directly onto our jar. Just smooth it over a chunk of that. And then add a piece of paper and you can rip the paper. It doesn't need to be cut. You can put it in different sizes, different colors. Whoops, there goes a piece. And I'm smoothing it down with my fingers to get all the air bubbles out of it. And then I'm going to go over it with another layer of Mod Podge. Oops, I'm dripping. <laughs> I'm an enthusiastic gluer. <laughs> so I've got different pieces of colored paper here, different colors, different textures, and I'm going to overlap them. And if I get a wrinkle in there, I'm just gonna smooth it out with my fingers as much as I can, flatten it out. And just keep adding more paper, more Mod Podge. I like all these different colors here. We have, let's see, I have some of my handmade paper and it's ones I was even testing a stamp on, but that doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. And I'm going to rip off some of the edges here and use that. Paper making is one of the things I'm grateful for. It's something I really love to do. So adding it to my jar, just my gratitude jar seems like a natural addition. If you are as drippy as I am, it's a good idea to protect your work surface. And I don't need to put these all straight. I can put them at different angles. I can overlap them however I feel like it. Add a piece here and a piece there. This is quite 
thick paper. I was trying to choose thinner ones that would adhere easily. This one might need a little extra Mod Podge. I was gonna use the handle there to push it down. That might not be a good idea since I have to put my hands back onto it. Let's see what else I can find here. Let's put this piece here. This is another piece that's quite thick, so I'm gonna to have to use a lot of Mod Podge to put it down. Make sure I push it down, get all the air out from under it. I can even scrunch up some of the paper and give it some texture here. You wrinkle it intentionally. Gives it an interesting look, plus I don't have to rip or cut my paper because then it fits. I like the look of the texture in there. don't have to have every inch covered because I'm going to be adding the words also. This is to get a base coat. I need some more Mod Podge. Oops, ah, that one's on me. I'm going to stop and wipe that off my shirt. <laughs> oh, look at this lovely shiny paper. I'm like a crow. I like shiny things. So we'll put a big piece of this one on over here. And that's going to do finish our base coat over here. So I'm putting another layer on top to smooth it out. And now I can start adding some pictures. Here's a picture of some roses, flowers, roses. I'm going to put that one right here. Let's see if I can make it so that the whole thing is on the jar. There we go. I'm really grateful for everything that's blooming right now. All the colors are very uplifting. Oh, here's another flower. Lovely sunflowers. All right. I think I'm going to reposition this while I can, while it's still wet. Doesn't matter if the other paper's coming off a little. I'm going to put it a little lower so it doesn't go over the, there's a rim here on the jar and I don't want to have to move this over the rim. So I'm just going to move it down a little. So let's try some words. Ooh, here's one I love. Garden. I love being in the garden this time of year. Well, any time of year that I can garden. I volunteer with the community garden. 
here's one that says grateful. So maybe I need that just to remind myself to keep in that frame of mind. Here's when I'm going to rip the edge. This one says family. I'm certainly grateful for my family. I actually looked through magazines this morning to look for the word Zoom because I'm grateful for Zoom because that's how I stay in touch with my family. I can see where it's lifting a little. I can keep going back and adding a little more glue, trying to get the air bubbles out from underneath. It is what makes it flat. So you might have to play with it a little and fold it a little, put a little pleat in it there to make it sit flat. This glue, even though it looks like it's not clear now, will dry all clear so you, can, you won't see the cloudiness over top of the flowers there. I have a few more words and pictures to add on to my jar. I'm going to just take a, a look at an arm's length reach and take a good look and see what I want. I think I want to put something over here. I want a word. Oh, here's a spot. I want to put the word sunshine and I'm going to put it under these sunny sunflowers. That uh, looks like a good spot for it. Keep pushing out the air, add some Mod Podge over top. I have a little piece of musical notes here. One side says prelude. Well, that doesn't matter. Uh, I just think that music is one of the ways that I stay creative and it's one of the ways that I feel uh, I'm so grateful for the music. It, um, it really helps me when I feel stressed or need to re unwind or focus. I can use music. So I'm going to put my musical notes right there, I think. There's a little empty spot there. And I think I'm going to add one more word here. Right here where it'll stand out. And it says eat. I don't know about you, but I've been enjoying doing that during the pandemic. And enjoying your food is a great way to stay positive too. Being grateful for having the food we need. Oop, my sunshine word is getting a little crumpled, so I'm going to make sure I put some pleats there where it needs to fold around the jar and smooth them out. You can just keep working with all the materials. As it pops up, just add some more Mod Podge and work it in with your fingers. I think we can add a little more around the top of the jar here. Just so we don't have too much blank spaces here. This isn't probably a, a very appropriate place to put words or pictures, although I suppose you could, but this tissue paper folds nicely into those little places. I don't want to be putting it over top of to mention my picture. And I don't want to put it over um, the part where the lid screws down. Oops, that's a little too big. I don't want to cover my word eat. <laughs> so 
You can see you can use little pieces, big pieces, anything that'll fit into the space you're using, or you could just shred it and tear it off to make it fit. I quite like the texture when it's all folded and has little pleats in it like that. Let's see what I need to still cover here. Oop, I'm going to lift that because I don't want to cover the words. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh glue here because I think that glue there is drying already. Here, we'll put that there. <laughs> I'm going to take these little scraps that I've torn off and I'm going to put them into a few places where I need some coverage. It's not quite big enough. So there, my whole jar is covered now. Oops. It's sticking to me now. <laughs> There, the last little spot I want to fill, right there. So I'll put another final coat over everything that's on the jar so far. Make sure everything's covered, keep pushing out air bubbles. And I can kind of use the side of my brush here to push it down if I need to. So now we can set the jar aside and let's work on the lid. And I'm going to cover the top of the lid first with some Mod Podge. Like I said, it looks, it looks cloudy now, but the Mod Podge dries very clear. And I've got a lovely little doily here to put on there. Perfect size for this lid. Oh, that's very pretty. I like that on there. We're going to start from the middle and work our way out so we can move the air bubbles out. And we're adding another layer of Mod Podge on top. I'm making sure that it's totally stuck down. I can use my finger in places if I need to. There's a lovely cut out here. This is pretty and green. I think we'll put that in the center here. I'm gonna add a little more Mod Podge. It's drying quite quickly. I'm going to put that in the center. Push it down, and again, I'm going to cover it with another layer, and I'm working from the center out to push the air bubbles out. Get any air out that's underneath it so it sticks totally flat. And I have one more word here that I'm going to put on top, and it says gratitude to remind me to stay focused on the gratitude, remind me to use my jar. Now your jar would look totally different than mine, different pictures, different papers, but the idea is the same, to focus on what you're grateful for. You could also add ribbon around the edge of your jar, 
a lid here or um, like you could see we decorated some of these with some little glitzy stones and some sequins and ribbons on this one and I think that's where I'll stop with this one I'm going to set my jar aside to dry one of the things I like to do with my gratitude jar is once it's all dried I put an elastic around it and I add a piece of paper or a little pad of paper and I'll slip it right under the elastic and I'll add a pen under the elastic. That way when I feel grateful I don't have to look for the paper or the pen. I can do a spontaneous gratitude addition to my jar. So I'm going to add something to my jar now and I'm going to put and I'm grateful for being creative. I'm going to put that into my gratitude jar. And I'll keep adding things every day to my gratitude jar. And when I feel down and I'm not feeling like I can, I'm feeling too positive, I can open my jar and read all the things that I'm grateful for. Thanks for joining me today. If you'd like to see some more uh, videos like this, join me in our Facebook group, Artsy Aging with Alice, for seniors 55 and over in the Penticton area. Also check out Arts Matter with the Penticton and District Community Arts Council. And if you'd like to see some paper making and upcycled paper ideas, you can check out my Facebook page, Harmony Paper and Art. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you enjoy some time being creative and focusing on gratitude and staying positive. Mm -hmm.